Hello everybody, this is Pastor Tom welcoming you to another study in the Word. Today I'm going to talk about a few dramatic visions that I have had that I wanted to share. I'm sharing these. The Lord has instructed me to share them with the body of Christ. And some of them are on there already. I talked about um, this uh, wicked uh, body of the devil that I saw. I call it the body of Satan. Uh, I, I've, I've shared a little bit. I shared on that. I shared... Uh, <clears throat> On some uh, uh, some other vision with uh, one one about the seers, uh, one of uh, uh, the 2020 being the year of judgment. But today I'd like to share some some other ones. In 1990, I actually wrote this in my book called "The Rise of the Glorious Church," which I think is still available. I'm not sure, but anyway, in that particular book, I wrote the vision that I had, and the vision that I had was real interesting because what God did is He opened my eyes to see above the United States of America, looking down on the United States of America. And uh, I saw many, many places, and I saw dots, little black dots. Um, and then they were all over this map of the United States of America, in every state. And I saw uh, many black dots, and I saw other uh, uh, little dots that were like on fire, like like little tiny bonfires that were here and there stretched throughout the United States of America. And uh, immediately I knew that these little uh, uh, spots that were far and few between were on fire churches. They, they were the churches that were really doing and uh, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ uncompromisingly. And they were the churches that were uh, worshiping uncompromisingly, moving in the spirit. They were they were churches that were doing their best to preach the uncompromising word, move in the spirit, and do all that God wanted them to do. They were soul winning places. They were places of, of revival. But most of them, most of these places, not all of them, but most of them were small. They were smaller places. And this is what I saw. And uh, I saw that this was the norm, so to speak, in America at the time. Now, the other places that were the black dots, some of them larger, some of them smaller, all right, were um, places where the Lord showed me were, were churches that were uh, not doing what he wanted them to do. They had taken on a lukewarm spirit, a seeker-sensitive, you heard me, a seeker-sensitive spirit, which was never of God, and they were... Uh, actually places where where there was so much compromise going on. There's a lot of sin. There's a lot of uh, uh, things going on, even in leadership in these churches. And the Lord showed me that they far outnumbered the uh, hot churches. These, these, these churches were also, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, they were also compromised, many of them, in their doctrine, doctrine, uh, liberal theology, denying even the blood of Jesus Christ. Not all of them did that. Some of them were sound in doctrine, were still lukewarm, dead. And these were churches that were not pleasing to God. And as I began to pray, the Lord let me know that there was going to come a time in the future when and I saw this, that, that all of a sudden I saw out of these dark places, little like ants, is what it looked like to me, that came out of there and they started skirting over to the places that were on fire. And the ants would get in that fire and the fire would just get a little bit hotter and a little bit bigger. And this began to happen slowly at first. You'd had one or two, then you'd have three or four, then maybe 10, then 20, 100, and then maybe 1,000 or whatever it was that in larger numbers. And, and as that happened, the fire got bigger and bigger and bigger. And it got to the place to where that the fire got so big, it covered literally the map. And the other places were far and few between. And the places that were on fire were the norm. Hallelujah. And I began to see this and I said, "What, Lord, what is that? He says, in the future. Now, this is 1990 when I had this. I start for, started first pastoring in, in Reno, Nevada. We had quite a move of God there. But I know without a shadow of a doubt in my heart that we are entering into the time that he showed me right now in 2020. This decade 
will be a decade of great outpouring and glory. Now, we're going through a lot right now, and we're going to go through more. It will not necessarily be the easiest time to be alive on planet Earth. There'll be a lot of things that are going to happen. We're going to have to fight. There's going to be wars, but we're going to win because the body of Christ is coming up, and we're praying, we're interceding, and the prophets are arising, the apostles are arising, the true ones. We got the body of Christ and we got the fivefold ministry gift coming together. And we are going to win. And when this begins to happen, it's going to begin to happen not just in one or two places, but it's going to begin to happen simultaneously. I hope I said that right. I have a hard time sometimes pronouncing words at the same time. It's not going to be one person over here, one person over here, just one move of God over here. But it'll begin to happen all basically all at once, or within a maybe a year or two, of it, and all of a sudden it will begin to grow and grow and grow. Now, why is this happening now? Well, through the Barack Obama years, when Barack Obama came on the scene uh, and, and was at the inauguration, I, I had a vision of him uh, uh, there, and I, and I saw the most evil. Um, how should I put this? The Lord said, this will be the most evil administration in history in the United States of America. Now, people can get mad at me and scream and yell like a squash cats, but the truth of the matter is, that was the right thing. And I didn't say, say uh, that to everybody. I just knew it. I told some of our church people and people like that. I said, you watch. Well, it's proven to be true. Eight years of hellish things that, 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 extended evil in our nation like no other presidency. And I'm not just talking about Barack Obama now. He has his part to play in that. But I'm talking about the administration, the people behind him. Now, they are evil. And I'm telling you what, uh, Hillary Clinton and, and Bill Clinton and the Bushes and people like that, a lot, they are, all have the same agenda. What they're trying to do is they're trying to bring in a one world system. We all know that. Now, people call this the deep state. They call it different things. Uh, you know, okay, whatever. You call it whatever you want. But out there, there is a plan and a plot that's been going on for years and is coming against the church. And now, in 2020, with the COVID thing and with the riots and with all the, they're coming out and they're showing their true colors and we can all see it. If you can't see that, if you can't see what's happening as a Christian, you are in serious spiritual trouble. And I want to say to you, if you're one of these Christians that votes for the Democrats right now, that left-wing wacko bunch of people that are bringing in this stuff, you are in serious trouble. I'm telling you right now, spiritually speaking, I love you. I care about you, but you have to be spiritually out there. And we have these evangelical pastors and all this. They're a bunch of liars. They're a bunch of, half of them aren't even born again that are coming against our president and saying, you know, because he, he doesn't have character, he shouldn't, we, he's not a Christian, we should vote him out. And they're going to vote, they're going to vote for killing babies. And they're going to vote for all these horrible things. Well, we got a lot of churches like that. We got a lot of pastors in churches that they're compromisers. They won't preach the word of God. They're limp fisted limp i don't know how they armed wimps and they have basically been involved in gathering money for themselves and 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 power for themselves and and taking on a form of godliness but denying the power and I'm here to tell you that God's done with that. He's done with lukewarmness. He's done with this. This is a time where if you're like that, you're in serious spiritual trouble. I'm just telling you what the Lord's saying to me. You cannot get away with this stuff anymore. He is going to hold people accountable for what they say, what they preach. And it better be in line with his word. And it better be the word of God. And it better be non-compromising. And these hungry people in the world that are rioting and many of them and many of them have been hurt many of them are at home right now they're stressed out many of them don't know what to do they are ripe in america for harvest they're going to come in and you're going to have sinners come in 
They're going to begin first be slow, but then all of a sudden you're going to see them start coming in, and they're they're going, one family is going to talk to another family, and they're going to come. And I'm here to tell you they're going to find these hot churches, these churches that are on fire. And I'm here to tell you what's going to happen is it's going to be a, a massive. Uh, that's going to begin to be massive. Not only are you going to see a change in the politics because we're praying, we're going to be the devil's worst nightmare. And there's going to be a lot of, some of us might even get thrown in jail. There might be a lot of stuff that happens, but we are going to win. And America will arise again. And I'm here to tell you, praise God forevermore, that old way of doing things in church, that whole thing. And I see this not only in every community. You know, I don't like to say black churches, white churches, and Hispanic churches. I don't even believe in that. Because we're all one color, as far as God's concerned. But in churches that are mostly African American and so stuff like that, it's going to be total changes. You're going to see a total change in the Democratic Party, a total in a lot of changes in the Republican Party, and and we're going to see all this. It's all going to be positive changes because God is going to expose the very hearts and what's been going on. It's going to traumatize America, shock America. And the church needs to be ready to take these people on. Now, not only will those people that are in the world come into the churches that are hot, finding what they need through Jesus Christ, but lukewarm, lied to, seeker-sensitive Christians that have went to church for years and been told a lot of hodgepodge of this and that that's not true are going to find their way there too. And it is going to start in 2020. 2021, 2022, you watch, it's going to be amplified, and it is already starting. It is in the air, my friends. It is in the air. The glory of God is being turned up, and I want you to be part of that. Now, that was a tremendous thing and a great vision, and I saw that in 1990. I think it's probably about 1992. Then I had a one here recently that I thought was very interesting as my wife and I decided yesterday that we would take a drive all the way up to Do- to northern Door County to the highest place you can go up there, which is the furthest place you can go at the north, which is Ellison Bay. And we went all the way up there and we prayed all the way up there. And, and then we got there and we prayed all over for the county and for the state of Wisconsin and for other things. And we began to pray earnestly. And as I was p- driving up there, praying in the Spirit, I had a vision of <clears throat> this man named George Soros, who is really not the, the, the highest guy. He's just one of them. But he is his assignment in the realm of darkness, if I can use that term, is clear. It's to, cause, to try to bring America down through... Whatever means possible. Got a lot of money. He funds. Now listen, I love you, and I'm sorry if you don't believe this. You check it out, you'll find out the street. Black Lives Matters. When you say that, immediately people, you know, but I believe all lives matter, including black lives and everybody else. So stop the racism thing. If you're one of these people that's pulling out the racism thing all the time, this systemic racism, that's a lie from the pit of hell. And if you're pushing that, you're lying. You're receiving a lie and you're you're talking a lie. It's not going to do anything but cause division. Black Lives Matter is not what you think it is. It's a radical communist left-wing agenda that comes out every four years before the election to try to do certain things to hinder the election, so on and so forth. But it won't work. George Soros is behind a lot of this. And I had this vision. I saw George Soros, and he was going like this with all his magical incantations, and he's laughing because he saw the riots And he saw all these people following him and his philosophies and the philosophies of the socialism and the communism. He doesn't, he hates those people. He is himself racist to the bone. He just, he was laughing. I could see him laughing. I'm manipulating these puppets. They're doing whatever I want them to do. They think they're doing uh, God's work, a lot of them. They think they're doing, you know, and I am in control and they are my puppets. And he's going like this and he's going like this. And he's laughing. 
He's laughing at the Christians. He's laughing at the church. He's thinking we are going to destroy the church. Look at them. They're, they're inside. They're not able to have their meetings. They're not able to worship. And he's going like this. And look at my riots. And, and, he's, and then all of a sudden he's laughing and laughing. And he's hysterically laughing. And all of a sudden behind him, I heard a laugh that was like a hundredfold of his laugh, like the like a roar, like like a, a laugh that came on the roar of many waters, and it was God laughing at him. And when that happened, and God began to laugh, all of a sudden he stopped this stuff, and he looked up with terror in the air, and he went like this, and all of a sudden. I heard God laughing, oh, 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 you know, Psalms 2. Check it out. And I saw George Soros burst into flames. And that was the end of the vision. We're going to see judgment this year. And we have seen a lot of judgment. The body of Christ has been judging itself. There's been a lot of repentance going on. As we were cooped up in these places and all this, God's working on us. I'm excited about what I'm seeing and excited for the future. It's going to be wild. It's going to be different. And yes, even a little scary at times. But you are well able, all right, to handle anything the devil can throw at you. Believe me when I say that. Hallelujah. Alama shuku sibra kata bo lamo simbre kishia na sunguru shiki tipo kula masambra kishia da boso. Hate bro shuku shingere beshi. Rise up, says the Spirit of God, with blatant boldness. For you shall be bold as a lion. And as my people begin to roar, and I begin to roar through them, I will literally put terror in the hearts of the enemy. For the enemy has brought on the back of the virus and the back of the things he's doing in the world and the things that people are seeing, fear. Fear is a spirit that is, is targeting my church, targeting this generation. La sambro kushipro kulama mashi reshiki te bo shambalama ponguru shipra kusipra kishi mo sapra. But when it comes to that, says the Spirit of God, I'm going to have the upper hand because my body is not going to fear. They're going to roar like a lion. They're going to roar and roar and roar with blatant boldness like this world's never seen and the enemy is the one that will be terrorized and the enemy is the one that will be running with terror and fleeing with terror and you will see it as my people even gather to pray you'll see manifestations of my people praying and then you will see the results of the prayers Esumbru kushi kalama, rasimbru kushi kalama sobade, mushunguria. I'm talking about physical demonstrations when they pray. Just as my people prayed in the book of Acts, chapter 4, when they were threatened, they got together and prayed, and the place shook with my power. It was a sign, says the Spirit of God, and signs and wonders like that will be given to my body. Do not shrink back. Do not fear. Do not even fear what the government can do or what they're saying or how they'll say they'll do to you. For I would say, California, you will win. I will say, governors, you will lose. I will say, ungodly governors, I'm coming. I'm coming with my people's prayers, and I am going to do what I need to do to remove you. Yes, I'll give you a time to repent. Some of your times to repent is over with, said the Lord. I've dealt with you and dealt with you and dealt with you, and I will deal with you no longer. I will remove. I will sift. I will go after those who have hurt my people and those who have been evil, and I will expose you to the entire world, and you will be a byword, a byword to the entire world. And it was seemed like for a season, said the Spirit of God, that you were one of these princes, that nothing could, nothing could, uh, no, nothing could harm you, 
nothing could be done to you, you had all the inside contacts, you were playing the plan, you had your witchcraft all around you, oh, nothing can help hurt me, I am above the world, I am on top, but I'm pulling that top down, that mountain's going to be pulled down on you, and I will expose you to the world for what you really are, and what you really have done, says the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, listen, I'm about out of time today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you have anything to say, you can go ahead and send me emails. You can go down to the link below, faithalifefellowship.org. And if you want to become a partner with us, you can do it there at faithalifefellowship.org. Please share this and go to my playlists and look around. It's a Bible school. It's basically a Bible school. And so, uh, if you like if you like this video, please share it. We appreciate you guys and love you. Until next time, this is Pastor Tom. Feed your faith, starve your doubts to death.